Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, I'm going to show you how to do this kind of a soft edge vignette look to use for these kind of collages. This is a wedding collage, obviously, but it's a real easy to use technique, and it's all done with layer masks and then softening up the edge of the layer mask. A couple ways of doing this. I'll show you one way and then my preferred way. Now, the first thing you need, of course, is to have pictures inside of your file. I'm, just, I'm going to get rid of all of these layer masks over here. I'll start from scratch. So I'll just delete these layer masks in here, and you'll see the original images. There we go. I'm just right-clicking and deleting all those. So there's all the original pictures. Now, to get the pictures into your file, let me walk you through that process. First off, you need to make a brand new file and that's just file, new, blank file, and then set up the size that you want to use. Now, a standard size for a wedding album, there are two standards that I've seen, 10 inches by 10 inches or 12 inches by 12 inches, and then just you know choose OK. This is going to be going for prints. So make sure your resolution is set at 300. Now, the sample that I have in here behind this little window is not that big. There we go. 10 by 10, so that's the size that I used for this image. So you create your new file. You can then put in a background if you want to. Let me show you how this background was done. Simply just a real simple gradient, as you can see here, it's just kind of darker up here and lighter down there, just real soft. I'll make a new layer in here so you can see this. There we go. And I use two colors. The first color here is just a real light yellow, right in the yellow range, real light, almost white. And then the second color right down here, the background color, it's a little more orange and then a little bit darker. So just, you know, two real light colors in there. And then I pulled a simple gradient, grab the gradient tool. You can put your gradient left to right, bottom to top, whatever you feel like is fine. And just do a real simple gradient like that. So there's my basic gradient. Now once I had that, I applied a texture to it. And the texture I used up here is Filter. It's in the Filter Gallery. We'll bring this up. It's just in the Texture section right there in Texturizer. And what I used was Sandstone. You have four in here. Let me pull so you can see. There we go. So I have four you can see in here. Brick, Burlap, Canvas, and Sandstone. I used Sandstone. I scaled it up just a little bit to 115 instead of 100%. And I add a little bit of relief. And I just let it straight down from the top. You can change the lighting direction in here. I just have mine just coming in from the top and choose OK. Just adds a little bit of a texture onto the page. I then soften the look up in here a little bit and I did that with Enhance, Adjust Lighting and Levels and then I just grabbed the middle one here, the grays, and I just pulled this over to the left about like that. And that just lightens up this whole thing. So there you go. That's how the background was done. As you can see, real easy and straightforward. Nothing to that. Now pictures. Let me bring our pictures back in again. I just brought these in from the actual pictures. And I have links for these pictures on the materials page. This actually, this middle picture is from another one of my discussions on how to do a soft focus background. So I have that picture in there as well. Let me just show you how this is done. I'll bring up one of these files in here. Let's just bring up that one. That's good. There we go. That's our little wedding ring down there. So just open the file, grab the background there, and drag it over here onto the new file. Then close that out, and there it is at the bottom of the stack. I'll put it at the top of the stack, and there it is. So that's all there is to bringing your pictures in. Simply open it up another file and drag it over here. Let me just get rid of this. One last thing in case you haven't seen this before. And that's what I have my window as a floating window in here. It can either be docked like that or floating. 
So floating, you can drag it around. You can resize it, anything you want. If it's docked, it's always inside this area. Easier to see tools, but more difficult to see your whole image. If you want to undock this, just grab the name tab and drag it down like that, and it floats. If you want to dock it again, just pull it until you see an outline. There's the outline, let go, and it docks. Now, if it's not doing that for you, go up to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences and General tab, and make sure these two checkboxes are checked. Allow floating documents in expert mode, allows you to float it, and enable floating document window docking, allows you to dock it back up here again. So make sure that those two are checked, and then you can do this floating technique just like that. Okay, so that's all the basics in here. Once you get your pictures in, you want to size them about what you want. I did a couple of verticals in here and a couple of horizontals at the bottom. I brought the size down on these a little bit. This is the actual size, full size of the picture. And these are brought down a bit, about, about one third the size. I can show you how that looks. I'll just move this up to the top layer. So you can see there, it's about a third down on these. I just brought those down, bring that up again. So there's the original size, and I just brought it down to about two thirds. And that just helps it to fit into the space a bit better. Okay, I'll put that back in behind again. Do that, and back in behind. Okay, once you have your pictures in, make sure they all look good. There's one of these I had to do a little tweak on, and that was this one. I'll bring this to the foreground. There we go. You can see that I've rotated this just a little bit. You can see there is the rotation amount there. It was a little bit crooked. There's a big fisheye lens, obviously, and it was tilted to the left a bit. So I just came out here and just give it a little tweak like that until it looked vertical in here. And it just kind of straightens things up. It looks better. It's okay when you're seeing the whole picture, but once you have it in with everything else, you can really notice that it was tilted over, so I rotated that a little bit just to fix that. Okay, now let's talk about doing the soft edge vignette. We'll start off here with our main picture. Now, again, a couple ways of doing this. Let's go over here. I'll be using the elliptical marquee tool. Let's just put this over here for a second. And there it is. And new marquee. Now, the two ways. First way is to set your feathering. These are pretty good sized images. You know, they're, let's see, they are, you can find out in a second here real fast for you exactly what this is. They're five by seven, or five by eights actually. They're pretty big, big images. Okay, I have my feathering set up 40 pixels. Now to do this first technique, come in here, you see there's my starting point. So come in here a bit, right now I'm just touching the corners come down a bit further so it's in quite a ways you can see here there it is right about there and I'll pull it down to the bottom corner at about the same distance out so quite a ways in from the edge you can see where the edge of that selection is I want to have some space out there that's because the softening the of the edge is going to come out this way if you're too close to the edge you'll see that hard edge in there so make sure you're a ways from the edge so we have our selection and then simply click on this button, Add Layer Mask. And what it does is it gives you that soft edge right there. And it's all done for a one shot. And you can then do that for all of your other pictures. Now this is a nice thing to do once you have figured out what that 40 pixels is that you want to work with. In this case, I'm doing 40 for this image. If you're not sure about that pixel size, you can adjust that and I'll show you how in just a second. But one thing first, after you have your layer mask made, if you unlink it, so click on the little button right there, you can unlink it, click on the layer mask side, notice the light blue outline, go to your move tool, and you can move the layer mask around without adjusting the picture. So you can maybe you know, adjust a bit. Notice if I go too far, I can see that hard edge on the right hand side right here. So you don't want to see that hard edge, but I can come just so it's almost at that edge and actually get the couple in a little bit better alignment in here, a little better centering on that. So you're going to adjust a little bit the positioning here by moving that around. Okay, so there's our basic couple in here on the middle. Now I'm going to show you how to do the other technique. I'm going to hide this layer. 
Let's come down to this layer right here. I'll hide everything else just to make it real easy to see what we're doing in here. There we go. Other technique also uses the same elliptical marquee tool. Let's just set our feathering to zero. So no feathering on the marquee. And again, I'll come a little ways in from the edge and I'll pull the marquee down towards the right bottom corner. So I'm left corner to top to right corner bottom. You can go other direction if you want to, just diagonal to diagonal. And I'll zoom in just a touch like that. Let's make the marquee for this one or the layer mask rather click on layer mask there's our layer mask and it's a hard edge layer mask which by itself is a nice look if that's what you're going for that's fine we can put a softness on this make sure that your layer mask is selected notice the light blue outline go up to filter come down to blur and Gaussian blur right there and the Gaussian blur I can now try different pixel settings for my blur Right here, I actually try them out. There's 29.1 on that, on the Gaussian blur. There's 38. If I get up here to 55, notice I'm beginning to see the edges of that picture in there. So the blur has gone too far and I'm seeing those hard edges. You don't want those, you don't want to go quite that far. So this allows me to actually come in and find just the right blur setting that I want. And I think for these, it looks like a blur setting of 35 is pretty good. So there's without and there it is with. So I use 35 on these. So you can use the Gaussian blur to find that pixel radius for your feathering. This is all this is doing. This is putting a feathering on that layer mask. Once you've tested it using the Gaussian blur, let's just cancel that. And we can now redo this and set that setting at 35. I'm just going to right click and let's delete that layer mask. There we go. Let's now go back to our elliptical marquee tool. I'll put this over here for a second. Let's set the feather here to 35. That's the number that we found over there with the Gaussian blur tool. And same thing, I'll come a little ways in on the upper left. I'll drag down to a little ways in on the bottom right let go and the feathering is already figured in here now now as soon as I click on that layer mask it gives me that feathering at that amount and the nice thing about that is I can repeat that for the rest of my pictures and they'll all have the right feathering okay let's just put this up a little bit I'm going to back out just a touch now so we can see our whole picture there we go there's the whole picture I'll put that right up here Let's bring our main picture back in the middle. Let's go up to this side. And I'll hide that again for a second. Back up to our elliptical marquee. And I'll come in and I'll do a marquee around here. Again, just in a little ways from the edge. Let go. Hit the layer mask. There it is. And again, that grabs that same 35 pixels that we found earlier. Come down to our bottom ones, there's this one, and that's right there. Same thing, elliptical marquee, in a bit from the corner, and then bottom right-hand corner, in a bit, bottom right-hand corner, and layer mask, there's that soft edge again. So you can see how it keeps that setting for me. So the feathering setting stays here as long as I'm on that tool and I don't change anything, making it very easy to come in and make these adjustments. Now what I just did there, I just grabbed the corner, of this you can actually change the window size so you can see a little more, more of what's around the window. Let's to our last one down here. That's our left one. Same exact technique. Let me just make sure I see the whole picture. There we go. Elliptical marquee. Come in a little ways upper left. Drag down to a little ways in from the bottom right. There we go. Layer mask. There's our soft edge. And let's bring back in our main picture. And we're all set to go. So it gives you a real nice, easy to control, soft edge look. If you want to have a lot of pictures in here, and you want to have you know, the background so there's no actual background showing, it's simply a matter of bringing in more pictures 
and bringing them in like this so that you have overlaps on them. There we go. And if you bring in enough pictures and place them around, you'll then fill the whole space up with these overlap pictures with those soft edges. It just takes a lot of pictures to do this. But you can do that. You can go ahead and just fill the whole picture with these soft edges. Just make sure that your main picture is in your foreground. You may have to play around with the order of these so they all look good. Just you know, changing your orders in here. Just grab your layer and drag it around to a different position to show it or hide it on your layer set. That's all you have to do. So this is a pretty simple layout here. I've kept things easy and basic for this discussion. But it's a pretty standard layout. Allows a lot of nice background area in here. But it does show you how you can easily make these nice soft edge vignette looks and then use those to create a nice wedding collage. Another way to go further on this if you want to, get some clip art of flowers and kind of stick those into these other areas. Clip art of wedding rings or if you have pictures of their wedding rings, you know, stick those in. So you can put in additional details around here or even on the overlap areas like that. You could put a little flower thing here, a little flower thing there, flower thing here and here. You can add a lot of fancy tricks to this to make it even more interesting. But the main trick I wanted to show you on this video, of course, is how to handle that soft edge. And the two things to keep in mind, one is to do a test first, create a hard edge mask, hard edge layer mask using your marquee tool. And then on the layer mask, double click on that, get the light blue outline on your layer mask, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then you can test the softness of that edge. I mean, there's, there we go, there's that edge. So you can test the softness of your edge on your layer mask right down here until you find just the level that you want to use, the level of softness that you want to use on that. And then you use that number that you found down here in the feathering section for the marquee. Then you can just repeat that over and over and over again and everything's going to match nicely. So there you go. That's how to do soft edge layer masks in this case for a wedding collage. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 